Greetings once again, my friends, and welcome back to Drac Reviews, where we take on a game that earned its own level of controversy, but was requested by you guys. As we take on the first foray by Warhorse Studios into the gaming industry, uh, with their first game, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Now, I should probably explain the controversy before I actually get into the review. Uh, the controversy that actually happened was that Warhorse Studios, or particular, uh, its creator, its fa not founder, but its uh, current leader, its CEO, fell under a lot of uh, undue criticism because of his ideas for Kingdom Come Deliverance. Most of the criticism is based around the fact that his characters and his world aren't diverse enough. And when you take into context what they were actually trying to do, it doesn't make sense for, diver for diversity to be in this game. Specifically, the game is historically based in the Kingdom of Hungary, during the Middle Ages and during actual historical events when uh, you actually had two warring heirs for the throne. You had Sigismund on one side and you had King Wenceslas, the rightful heir to the throne of Hungary, uh, both fighting against each other. And it's all historically accurate to this, but obviously through a gaming element to be able to help tell that story. And people got mad at the development studio for not having diversity in the game. Whereas his argument is, it's historically accurate. And I'm sorry, but certain races were not in Europe or in uh, in Europe in the Middle Ages at that point. So uh, in a lot of cases, I actually do stand with the creator. But I wanted to at least explain the controversy that surrounded Kingdom Come De Deliverance. With that, let's go ahead and go into the story. Like I said, it is based on historical events. You actually follow a son of a blacksmith named Henry who lived out in the remote village of Scalitz uh, during, this con during the time of this conflict. And early on in the game, Sigismund's mercenary human forces actually invade and loot and pillage Scalitz. And it's up to Henry to get word to the neighboring kingdoms and then ultimately to then side with King Wenceslas and fight against Lord Sigismund in this conflict. Uh, overall, the story, I, I mean, I'm not a historian, so I can't necessarily talk about historical accuracy, but it feels like it would properly be in the Middle, a in the Middle Ages in a non-fantasy sense. It actually feels like, yeah, this does make sense as far as what was actually going on and, and the conflict that was going on about it. And I did actually do a little bit of homework on this one, and it looks like it's pretty accurate to the events. So from a story context, I can't necessarily fault them. They did what they were actually aiming to do, and, and I compliment them for it. Even the Assassin's Creed team, when they were actually doing this, they had some level of difficulty trying to maintain accuracy within Italy, within the uh, Crusades era, and also maintain an Assassin's Creed feel to it. So it's not necessarily the easiest of jobs, and I will admit for story, I didn't necessarily take any points off for this. Moving on into visuals, and I actually will compliment Warhorse Studios, considering that even though that they've gone over many names, including uh, Prog Game Studio and things like that over the years, this is technically like their first foray into full-on game design, and it's not bad. Considering that it is a first attempt, it, it is going to have some rough corners, like I've said in the past, but overall, where I expected a lot of clipping and a lot of buggy characters, I didn't really get any. And so at that point, I'm going to give them some solid compliments for that. Henry has, unfortunately, a lot of the models in the game have kind of drab faces, but considering the engine that they're having to work with and, and the funding that they had to work with, I completely ignore, I, I completely excused it. It at least looks good enough to be able to function on modern day consoles. If It probably would have been, I want to say, ahead of its time on the previous generation, but for the most part, it functions and it works well, and the visuals that you're looking at are not horrible, considering that this is a first foray into gaming. So I will admit, I didn't take really any points off of it. Uh, maybe a little bit here and there just for the model design, but understandably so. I do think Warhorse did a good job here visually. Moving on into gameplay. Gameplay is very much reminding me of like the Elder Scrolls games, and it's not even that. It's actually trying to maintain some level of accuracy, like you don't have magic spells or anything like that. The only reason I'm saying it's Elder Scrolls-esque is because there is such a thing as stamina. There is such a thing as like actual character hunger. There is actually things as weight that you can actually carry and there is a first person combat kind of situation. These aren't necessarily bad things and considering its execution, again, I don't really have too many things to fault for this. Uh, it actually is able to execute fairly well. Its story scenes don't have any issues. You actually do have a little bit of choice 
in your interactions with the characters. So I did like that as well. Like you can, you could easily play Henry as kind of the, the blacksmith son where he doesn't really know much about the world, or you can play him off as extremely arrogant and, and you're going to get res- uh, corresponding responses to it either way. So at that point, I'm, I'm at least going to give them some credit here and say, yeah, you actually developed a really well put out game considering the material that you were trying to work with. And overall, the gameplay, I looked everywhere for bugs. I looked everywhere for issues. I may have found one or two that I could nitpick about, but overall, the game does function. Moving on into audio. Again, a lot of my complaints would probably consist of, on the fact that it's a lesser budget. It's what they had to work with. Uh, the music works when it actually, when you, when you can actually tell that there is actually music going on, I know I'm saying actually a lot right now. Uh, when there is music going on, it works. I don't really have any complaints with it. The act, the voice acting is as good as it's going to be, considering that it has to be somewhat historically accurate, and you can't really have too many bombastic characters. Uh, am I gonna say that the voice actors are the greatest thing I've ever heard? No, not really. But considering that they might have actually had to hire within staff to be able to make this work, eh, it's acceptable. I would actually say that a lot of the line reads and a lot of the direction seems proper with uh, with what I experienced in the game. And so at that point, I don't really have too many points to take off of this particular issue. Replay value and presentation. Now, that's where it gets a little bit difficult, as I do think that there's an open world aspect to Kingdom Come Deliverance. I didn't really explore it too much, uh, but there is kind of a, for, uh, a forthright plot that you do need to follow. So at that point, um, I do, I, I will admit, I did take a little bit off of replay value just because the way that I see players handling this is they go and complete the story and be able to see all of the events unfold. And then at that point, if they want to go do some open world stuff, they can, but more than likely, they probably won't. So I did take points off for replay value presentation. However, I didn't really take anything off. Overall, what the what War Horse Studios was trying to do, they succeeded for the most part. It is a first time effort. And so at that point, I'm going to once again emphasize there are going to be rough corners to that. Things are not necessarily going to look as polished as, say, Bethesda. But unlike Bethesda, I didn't find too many bugs in this. And so at that point, it's already better than most Elder Scrolls games I've ever come across. But overall, the only uh, shortcoming that I see that with the presentation here is, again, the historical accuracy. I, I like the fact that they tried to stick to that. But as far as gamers are concerned, when they come into a middle age based game, it's mostly to, to experience fantasy. And so at that point, I actually see this game kind of turning off a few people. And maybe history buffs would really love this game. But to a person who's looking to have like another Elder Scrolls experience, they're going to get thrown off just a tad which is why I have no problem giving Kingdom Come Deliverance a 7 out of 10. Now, before I actually get into the explaining of the score, I should say on a personal note, this is kind of a doom situation for me where I'm being as honest as I can be with the review itself. But if I'm going to give kind of my personal experience with it, I got kind of bored with Kingdom Come Deliverance. And it's only because it's like Elder Scrolls to me. And Elder Scrolls, I've never been a fan of that series. I've never been fan a fan of the first person fantasy kind of genre. I've never been a fan of going out and wandering aimlessly in fields until I find a village. I've never really been a fan of it. So personally... This review was kind of hard to get through, but I wanted to stay as honest as I could to it, hence why I did uh, give it the 7 out of 10. I really do think that for a first effort, this was a C. This was a solid C effort from Warhorse Studios, and I, I kind of wish that they'd step out of the historical accuracy, but I would like to see what they come up with next. Uh, it actually did pique my curiosity a little bit and made me want to watch for what Warhorse Studios has on the horizon, or if this is going to be their first time effort, I don't know. Uh, but overall, yeah, I think it's a solid C effort, but is it worth it? Currently, you can get Kingdom Come Deliverance for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC, and it is available for $39.99. Is it worth it at that price? I would actually say yes, it is, considering the amount of depth that the game has and the amount of content that you actually are able to get out of it. I think it is well worth the $39.99 bargaining point. If you can get it on sale, that's even better, uh, especially if you can get this thing five or ten bucks off at twenty nine ninety nine. It's probably a steal at that point, as far as I'm concerned. But again, the thing that you need to keep in mind for it, while it's worth the price point, you have to know what you're walking into. It is historically based. It's not necessarily fantasy of any kind. 
And so if you're looking for that, it's probably not going to suit your fancy. But if you want to experiment and you want to be able to go and see how a historically accurate game would go through the Middle Ages, then this is the game for you. This is the game that I would recommend for you. And that's going to go ahead and do it for this review of Kingdom Come Deliverance. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for your continued love, support, and patience for the channel. I really do appreciate it. And of course, I'll be back in time for the next review.